Hello, we are working on another repair video with uh, Fix All Cell. Today we're doing the ZTE ZMAX LCD. Here's a list of the tools you will need to uh, get it going. There's a picture of the screen. So here our artisan is getting started by removing the SIM trays. He's removing the SIM tray, I take that back, the SIM tray and then also the SD card tray. Um, always want to get those out first. It's a good habit to be in any type of repair you do. Um, now he's taking a pry tool and prying off the back cover. Um, I believe we took this off before, so it's uh, going to come pretty easy for him. Yours might be more difficult. Always be uh, you know, gentle and careful. Um, there might be adhesive on the back, so um, when you take it off, you know, be careful for that. The next step is to remove all the nine screws that are holding the, uh, the mid-frame and the uh, the components together. And now again using another pry tool um, pop off the the mid frame. You can sometimes use your fingernails um, if you don't have a pry tool. But uh, usually if you you know when you get this part um, use a you know get a pry tool kit. You are welcome to get a part from us, and we provide you with those toolkits. Um, we also just get, offer toolkits separately if you need to get one, um, so we can definitely help you. But yeah, there you go. Now that's popped off. Now the next step is to remove tape. This was actually the very first ZMAX we'd ever worked on. Um, there was no videos um, to date to uh, to help with doing this, so we uh, kind of went blind on this. Um, so you'll see him going a little slower than normal, which is nothing wrong with going slow. Um, there he took off the, the battery. Um, that was taped on. His, yours probably won't come off that easily. But um, we got the front and the rear camera off. Now a good trick to do is um, he's looking at the, uh, the other L LCD and seeing where components go. Great thing to do when you are taking yours apart so you can see see how he sees there this is where these things go so he knows what to take off next now he's removing the tape for the bottom component the bottom part of the logic board there those uh, are called jaw connectors you want to be very careful with those if you pull on those and break the little the jaw piece off, it won't sit down very well. So definitely take your time with those. You don't want to break off those little plastic uh, hinges. Because I believe the only way to really fix that is to uh, do some micro soldering, which at that level is very difficult, or to replace the entire logic board, and that needs to be pretty expensive. And if you can even find a logic board. <clears throat> So now he's taking off the screw that's holding the logic board in place. For those who aren't familiar with the term logic board, uh, it's just a name we like to call motherboards. Um, it's the main um, circuit board which holds all the uh, you know, the components, usually the memory and the main processor is on it. Um, now he's going to pry the uh, logic board off of the, uh, the front frame. Here he's uh, taking some time because it's uh, adhered on there pretty well. Also it's the first time we'd ever done one. so. We were definitely going slow and making sure that we're not going to cut something or, or tear something. Sometimes these manufacturers like to make it difficult to fix them. I think it's partly because they want you to just go buy another one. Um, so, uh, you know, always be careful and gentle. HTCs are notorious for being very difficult to fix. <laughs> um, so. ZTE is not, not so bad. This phone isn't, isn't too terrible. Now he's removing the volume. I believe that's the volume up and volume down button, which is actually connected right to the logic board. It's uh, glued on to the, uh, or taped onto the side of the frame on the bezel. And he'll be removing the power button there. A little bit of heat on that. We'll cause it to loosen up and then he'll use the iSesmo tool which we love great tool to have 
Oh, take that back. He starts with the tweezers to kind of get it started. Whoever invented the ice test smoke tool is a uh, is a great, <laughs> great asset. It was a great asset to the uh, cell phone repair industry. Now he's just using the ice test smoke tool to lift that up. So something metal and flat like that is a is a good thing to, to have. He's pulling off something there. Um, again, the key here is just to take your time and uh, make sure everything is disconnected on the outside of the board that's holding it to the, uh, the LCD or to anything else that does not lift up with the board. So here there's some clips there and he's um, working that holds the board in place and he's working to get the, get the uh, board loose from that. And there we go, the logic board is released. Took us a little bit of time there, but we you know, wanted to make sure we didn't break something. So There's the antenna there, lifted that up a little bit. Now he's going to remove the bottom part of it, which is going to be the uh, charging port, I believe, assembly, or the, the flex buttons. using a pry tool. Can't see exactly what he's doing, but he's, he's just gently prying off the lower left corner, getting started with it. You'll be able to see here in a minute. Um, he's actually taken off, he took off the uh, antenna housing there. Um, not sure what the correct term is for that. The antenna piece with the, <laughs> the, the circuit board is connected to. It was taped on the bottom. Now he's heating up the bottom there to, uh, to continue working. And those are, I believe, the flex cables. So that's going to cause your uh, the back and the uh, you know, the menu button, those buttons on the bottom of the screen to, to work. So he's taking those out. Those might just be the lights, but I'm pretty sure those are the sensors as well. Yep, those are flex cables. So be careful with that. Um, you know, if you pull on that too hard, you can break them, and then those buttons won't work. If you do, it's not not too ter terrible. Those aren't too expensive to get. They're usually pretty cheap. Usually a few bucks. If you need help getting those, we can definitely get them. You can order them from us. Any questions you ever have on this, feel free to call us or send us an email. Um, we're here to help. Um, also, make comments below. We have a hard time. Um, it's hard for us to follow up on the comments below. Emails we respond to better. Um, we, we try our best. There, we took out the earpiece. That's a very important part. Um, it's easy to forget that, but uh, if you forget, that's your earpiece speaker. And so, or, yeah, earpiece speaker. And so um, when you are uh, putting that in there, make sure you put it in correctly. There's going to be two little connectors which touch the logic board. Make sure they're, it's not upside down. But if I was going to say, if you forgot that part, then you will make a phone call and you won't be able to hear anything. So very important. And it's very easy to... To overlook that piece. Now he's putting in the uh, the flex cables in the bottom, um, lining it up. Apologize, we sh um, got a little bit out of the camera shot there. But if you look at your uh, your piece, you can see how it goes. Um, it goes in place. It's not a bad idea to use a little bit of tape to hold it down if you need to. A little bit, little bit of double side sticky tape. A lot of times you can just kind of get it in place with the adhesive that's already on it. Now he's putting in the antenna assembly. Pushing that into place. Make 
making sure it's sitting where it needs to sit. And he's trying to connect the, uh, the connector there, which goes to the uh, flex cables in the front. So he's getting that connected in and pushing that down into place. And then you get the antenna to go up on the side correctly. Okay, next step is to put the logic board back in. And put all the connectors in that need to where they need to go. Actually, that's the connector for the uh, flex cables. And the connector on the bottom there, I think, is uh, for something else. I'm not sure. And there's that connector, which I believe is for the part of the digitizer. Not totally sure, though. But the big point is make sure you get all your connectors that need to be connected back in. <laughs> Now he's pushing the top uh, part of the logic board into the uh, um, the clips. There's a little black clip. Okay, so now we're just finishing up here. He's putting in the, uh, the pop connector, or the, uh, sorry, the jaw connector. Ribbon into place. Now he's making sure the logic board is lined up. Putting the antenna in the groove that it's supposed to go into. Make sure that is in the correct groove. If that is loose or sticking out, when you try to put the, t the uh, back plate on or the midframe, it will uh, may not sit correctly. Always be careful when putting on the midframe. You don't want to uh, um, break stuff. So if something's not going, don't force it. Always be gentle. Putting in the rear camera. That just pops into place there on the side. And then the uh, front-facing camera will pop into place there as well. You should hear it pop or feel it in your finger go into place. It's a wonderful feeling. <laughs> now we're taking the, uh, the screw on the bottom there for the logic board, screwing that into place. That screw is um, not terribly important, but it's definitely good for, especially for uh, for when you charge it, it kind of helps hold the board in place so it doesn't get um, jarred or whatnot. So don't don't forget those screws. The tape is also don't forget the tape. It's always good to have that in place. That provides um, reduces ambient um, static and helps keep things in place. It keeps the dust out of connectors that can cause issues. So taping up those little jaw connectors. Okay, now we're putting the battery in. Push it in place and pop it down. And now we're going to go with the, uh, the mid frame. He's making sure now that his volume buttons are in correctly. Oh, he's, actually, we're checking it. I forgot. So we're checking it. This is a smart thing to do. Check the digitizer. Slide it up and down. Make sure there's no shorts in it anywhere. And then use your gyroscope and check it sideways. If there was a short, you would see it skip. And that's uh, really nice to, to find that out before you put it all together and start using it, um, whether your screen's good or not. If your screen is not working, you can usually send it back and they'll warranty it out. But if you start to uh, take everything apart on it, they, uh, they may not warranty it for you. But they'll say, oh, you already used it. So you want to be as careful as possible. Now you're popping those pop connector, or I'm sorry, the uh, the back frame under those clips. He's checking the sides to make sure everything goes in there smoothly. Again, that's where the antenna could uh, cause problems if it's not in there right. So now we're putting those screws back into place and just about wrapping up here. If you got any questions about this repair, give us a call or send us an email. Um, you can comment below. Um, if you need help fixing it or need us to fix it for you, let us know. We'll. We'll do it for you. And there we go.